ಕುಂಜಿಹಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ ವಲ್ಲಭ ಗಿರಿವರದಾರಿ ಯಶೋದಾನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಮುನಾತಿರಾವನಚಾರಿ ಯಮುನಾತಿರಾವನಚಾರಿ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಗಿಹಾರಿ ಕೀರ್ತನ ವಲ್ಲಭ ಗಿರಿವರದಾರಿ ಜನರಂಗನಾಲಂಗನಾಮನಾಮನಚಾರಿ ಯಮುನ ತೇರಾವನ ಚಾರಿ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಗಿಹಾರಿ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರ ಹರ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರ ಹರ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಮ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ಹರ 
ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಪದಕಮಲೀಗುರುಣ್ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹ ಗಣರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವದೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣಚೈತನ್ಯದೇವೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸಹ ಗಣಲಲಿತ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಮಿನಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾಬದನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದಾಯತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾಮನೆ ಗೌರತ್ವಶೇ ನಮಃ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನ ಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತುತೆ ದಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಛಾಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓ 
ओं नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास यो जय मुदीर ये नष्ट प्राएद्रेशम भागवत सेवया भगवत्युतम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ठी कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंदगोपकुमाराय गोविंदय नमो नम सुखम ऐंद्रियक दैत्या देहयोगेन देहिना सर्वत्र लभ्यते दैवात् यथा दुखमयत्नत सुखम ऐंद्रियक दैत्या देहयोगेन देहिना सर्वत्र लभ्यते दैवाद यथा दुखमयत्नत सुखम हैप्पीनेस ऐंद्रियक विथ रेफरेंस टू द मेटीरियल सेंसेस दैत्या ओ माय डियर फ्रेंड्स बोर्न इन डेमोनियक फैमिलीज देहयोगेन because of possessing a particular type of material body dehinam of all embodied living entities sarvatra everywhere in any form of life labhate is obtainable daivat by a superior arrangement yatha just as दुखम अनहैप्पीनेस अयत्नत विदाउट एंड एवर ट्रांसलेशन डिवाइन ग्रेस ऐसी भक्तवर्धन स्वामी श्री प्रभुपाद की प्रहलाद महाराज कंटिन्यू माई डियर फ्रेंड्स बॉर्न ऑफ डेमोनिया फैमिलीज द हैप्पीनेस हैप्पीनेस परसीव्ड विद रेफरेंस टू द सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स बाय कांटेक्ट विद द बॉडी can be obtained in any form of life according to one's past furtive activities such happiness is automatically obtained without endeavor just as we obtain distress see what is prahlad mara saying everybody is carrying some punya and papa in their account according to that the fruits come in the next life and the next life fruits don't come by hard work it comes by past good and good deeds and bad deeds for example reliance company has 20000 crores one has isn't it no. hindu jaz 47000 crores so anil ambani you can see like that how many thousands of crores so the children born in these families as soon as they are born and they open their eyes suddenly they become owner of 47000 crores <laughs> Do you think they worked very hard? That means it comes from their past good deeds. On the other hand, you work any amount of hard work you do. You are. Uh, do you think you can ever get forty thousand crores? Uh, even if you get few hundred crores, you'll be happy. But to get forty thousand crores in this life by hard work, huh? so therefore he says that you have done fruitive activities in the past, for which in this next life you are born. Now, uh, in a family where the result of the fruitive activities are given, correct? Similarly, somebody is born as soon as the child is born. The child is born very hand handsome, beautiful looking child, huh? isn't it? You can see there are people who have a very handsome face. Huh? You know, as soon as they get up in the morning, that time that time only their face is handsome. Huh? Not that they have to, you know, work hard to put some cosmetics in the face and. you know trim the hair and so many things huh? some people have natural bodily beauty you agree huh? they they are born with a particular face cut nice face cut and then they are later on they become models or some cinema actors or actresses correct no and they have a particular type of face cut given to them so the 
uh, you know, do you think everybody cuts their face? You, you cut your face or God cut and gave you a face? Yeah. According to what? According to the past. You know? The wealth, the bodily beauty, family in which you are born, and how much pleasure and pain, quantum of pleasure and pain will be awarded to you. you know? These are all pre-decided at the time of birth. It's called Brahma Lipi, we call it. It's written. Uh, whatever is in your account will come to you. You don't have to worry. Definitely it will come to you. It is your quota because you have done the work. For example, you are joining a company which gives you appointment order. So they say, you know, your job is 8 lakh per annum, for example. They promised you, they gave you appointment order. You join. So monthly, whatever amount has to come, at the end of the month, it will go to your bank account. Correct, no? So they will, they will give you what they have promised you. That will come naturally. So you don't have to worry. You just do the job at the end of the month, you get the remuneration. So, the bodily beauty, the wealth, the pleasure, the pain, uh, what you receive in this life, uh, sufferings or enjoyments, it's a remuneration for what you have done in the past, past lives. And now you may say, now I am doing working so hard, what about that? For that remuneration will come in the next life. Correct, no? Like imagine when you join a company, you say, now this is which month is starting now? Fifth, fifth of April. So for April month, they'll give you salary on 1st April or 1st May. 1st May, correct. No. Can you say that? No, now only you give me. Can you say that? No. You work for full month. At the end of the month, they'll give you salary next month. Similarly, you work for the whole life and the uh, remuneration will come in the next life. That's what, that's what he's saying. See here, he says, yeah, he says, uh, my dear friends, one, okay. the happiness perceived with reference to the sense objects by contact with the body. Sense objects, for example, each of the senses like Shabda, Sparsha, Rasa, Rupa, Gandha, for all of them there are objects. Hmm? Like somebody gets a wife, somebody gets a certain type of food, somebody gets to live in a certain type of house, hmm? somebody gets a certain type of car, hmm? somebody gets a certain type of dresses. Somebody gets certain type of relatives around you. So these are all the sense objects around you, huh? which your senses enjoy. Correct, no? The eyes want to enjoy, you know, beautiful forms. Huh? So somebody gets a very beautiful wife. Somebody gets an ugly wife. Correct, no? Huh? And that is also destined by what? From the previous life. Yeah. Sometimes you find a man is very ugly. He has a fat, fat man, a big belly, a big mustache. He looks very ugly. But the wife is very beautiful. Huh? She is like a goddess of fortune. Eh? Yeah. And you wonder, my lord, this fellow has such an ugly fellow got such a beautiful wife. Eh? On the other hand, you find the man is very handsome, tall, looks like a cinema actor, but his wife is like a small rat. Eh? She is running here and there. Such kinds of things do happen or not in this world. Because he is allotted the quota like that. Similarly, you will find there are people, you know, who actually, uh, you know, there are very rich people who go to the star hotels, correct? No, five star hotel, seven star hotel, five, three star hotel, and all. And they're very careful, you know, people wear the gloves and masks and everything very carefully. They serve, it's very hygienic, correct? No, and even they get corona and die also, even after taking utmost care, correct? No, because their expiry date has come, therefore they are gone, even though they have taken utmost care. On the other hand, you find near Pune station, you can find in the slum and all Jopri, but you will find people are, you know, cooking outside. And a dog is going round and round, passing urine here and there. And the gutter is there, mosquitoes are there. And, you know, there are crows and other birds passing stool from the top. And they're cooking open. There is nothing even, there's no closed cooker also, open, open vessel. What goes inside, God knows. And that fellow, he eats, that is atta katta like a bull. Huh? You've seen people like a bull. There is no hygiene, still that fellow is very, uh, he will be strong because you will see that as long as a person is supposed to, destined to live that period, Ayu, huh? either Alpa Ayu or Madhya Ayush or you know, Dirga Ayush, 30 or 60 or 90. Huh? So accordingly, whatever age is given, they live. Huh? So the amount of Ayush you get to live, the bodily beauty, the wealth, what type of wife, husband you get. What type of children, cooperative children, or rebellious children you will get. Hmm? 
it's all uh, you know given from your purva janma fruitive activities what you have done so uh, he is saying that that is how it will come prala is giving an example he is saying yatha dukham aa yatnatah yatna yatna means what endeavor aa yatna means without an endeavor it will come really yatha dukham aa yatnatah <clears throat> for example how many of you here got viral fever at least once in your life till now <clears throat> you all got it did you go to temple and pray to god oh god i'm too much enjoying life please give some viral fever <laughs> did you pray then how you got uh, that's what he is saying yatha dukham ayatna ta dukham comes ayatna without endeavoring dukha came to you like that sukha will also come he is saying as dukha came to you without any struggle sukha will also come to you <clears throat> like that he is saying hmm. so uh, uh this is uh, the prahlad is teaching to his friends huh, in the gurukula school it's a very deep message and that he is conveying uh, through this was everybody is uh, in, uh, now you may have one question uh, do people get everything without an endeavor we can't say without an endeavor we can say with a very natural and little endeavor they get like a bird for example is destined for some fruits he has to just fly half a kilometer and the forest there are abundant fruits available he can just pick up as many fruits he wants and bring it and keep it in the nest and enjoy that's all little effort without any stretch or strain easily the bird gets his fruit similarly the elephant in the forest it eats tons of grasses you know you can imagine somebody may say so much if you have to eat so much money you need also but doesn't have any single penny hmm. not ready go to any college and earn a degree also correct na no? elephant but how is he eating hmm. so you may say no 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 elephant bird they may get but as human beings who will give us food people ask question correct no now you find there are so many sadhus huh, living all over india who is giving them food hmm. like i am also a sadhu sitting here here is a sadhu who is giving sadhus food hmm. he is sadhu going to company and earning money and that is how he is, is getting food he is getting food automatically how is he getting so therefore he is saying actually in this nature you will find that if something is in your quota it will come to you at any cost in india people have a deep faith in this it's called takdeer we say na a destiny we say like there was one man who was frustrated with life he wanted to commit suicide he went to a very big top of a hill and he decided to jump off from there and commit suicide he just closed his eyes he closed his eyes closed his ears and he jumped off from there tall hill he thought i my body will crash into pieces like that but his body came flying down down there was a river he didn't notice his body came and fell in the river and the water splashed in the river at that time there was one rajkumari and her friends taking bath in the river and they already had uh, con- I mean, encountered uh, crocodile big crocodile had come to indian rajkumari and opened the mouth bah, like that the other friends got frightened they swam back to the river bank but she got stranded in the middle of the lake and she was crying out of fear getting frozen she didn't know what to do at that time this fellow's body came and fell next to the crocodile and the crocodile got frightened <laughs> what is somebody putting bomb from the top so the minute the crocodile went under water and all her friends immediately again swam into the river and picked her up huh? and they the man was wondering what is happening he didn't know then some people were called they all brought the man out and he was taken to the father of the rajkumari and told he is the hero who saved your daughter <laughs> you know yeah some hero who came from the top huh? like a super like a superman you know and and the king uh, told him that i only had one daughter you know i had nobody else to rule the kingdom next to me so i'll make you the next king is that and you can marry my daughter said and the man was like taken by surprise i am going to commit suicide i got a beautiful wife as rajkumari and i am also becoming a king because that was written in his destiny so he was destined for that although he was foolishly trying to do something else it will come so if happiness is in your destiny it will come similarly if suffering is in a destiny no matter how much you try to escape it comes also like i saw one day one devotee wanted the sweet rice i mean uh, prasadam plate one fellow made prasad plate and brought but there was no sweet in there and that fellow asked hey where is the sweet he said 
Prabhuji, I didn't know whether you take sweets or not. I, I definitely take it. Bring it. Yes, hmm? Then he went and brought this uh, one big leaf cup of sweet rice. But he came little running fast because Prabhuji started prasad. And just very nearby, he stumbled and fell upside down. The sweet rice fell on the ground. And all the ants were eating it. Hmm? So the fellow became very angry. So he was shouting at him, How foolish you are, you are bringing sweet rice and toppling it down on the ground. It was uh, under the tree in a sandy place. So his friend told him, See, Dane Dane Pilika hai chinti yonga naam. Therefore, the chinti got. <laughs> you didn't get. Today it's not there in your dressing. But he didn't believe it. He again told the devotee, Okay, get one more cup, he said. Then the devotee again went to the kitchen and said, Prabhuji, they are saying it got over. He came back and said, Prabhuji, the sweet rice got over, he said. And this fellow said, no, 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 it's got over for the people in the hall. But there will be one bucket inside. Uh-huh. That you should go and find out, he said. So, then uh, he went to the kitchen inside. And then surely bucket was there, but that bucket was also empty. And he asked the devotees, how it's empty? Are just two minutes before we served all the devotees, those who are servers, they were also served. That also got over. Then this devotee came and said, Sorry, Prabhuji, he said. So he got very upset. So his friend told him, Don't get upset. In your Thakdi, there is no sweet rice today. Hmm? That's not written for you. Actually, if you agree uh, that it is not in your destiny, you will be peaceful. That's called acceptance. We call it. Hmm? It's called acceptance. So, not only that, all of us will find we are all awarded a body which is like particular model vehicle. Huh? Like a, uh, somebody's body is like a Luna. Huh? Somebody's body is like a Maruti. Somebody's body is like a Benz. Huh? Somebody's, Maruti is like, somebody's body is like a plane. Huh? In an aeroplane. And everybody has a different capacity, capability. Huh? Like you, you can see in your own class, you will find boys are of different intelligences. Do you agree? Are they all of same intelligence or different intelligence? Different intelligence. Some are super intelligent. Huh? Some are a little dull. Huh? And some are very handsome, some are ugly. You find that. Huh? Some are very rich, some are mid- middle class, some are poor. So Prahla is saying that in the same building you will see that the owner of the building. Huh? In that building, the owner is living as a millionaire. Huh? But then there are also servants coming to the building. They get some salary. And in the same building, there are also rats in the kitchen. Huh? And there are also cockroaches. There are also ants. These are all different creatures. But all of them are living in the same building, but they all are getting different amounts of pleasure and pain based on their Purva Janma Karma. Uh, somebody became chinti, somebody became ant, somebody became rat, somebody became you know, cockroach, uh, somebody became a servant maid, uh, and somebody became owner. Uh. So, he is saying that the happiness is automatically obtained without endeavor, he says, just as we obtain distress. So, now, what is the meaning of saying this? You will understand more. In the material world, in any form of life, there is some so-called happiness and so-called distress. No one invites distress in order to suffer, but still it comes. Similarly, even if we do not endeavor to obtain the advantages of material happiness, we shall obtain them automatically. This happiness and distress are obtainable in any form of life without end- without endeavor. Thus, there is no need to waste time and energy fighting against distress or working very hard for happiness. Our only business in the human form of life should be to revive our relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead and thus become qualified to return home back to Godhead. Material happiness and distress come as soon as we accept a material body, regardless of what form. We cannot avoid such happiness and distress under any circumstances. The best use of human life, therefore, lies in reviving our relationship with the Supreme Lord Vishnu. See, <clears throat> like we are putting up a class like this huh, everywhere, all over the country. But you will find that most people are not interested to come for a spiritual class. Correct, no? Instead, what most people will say, uh, uh, instead of wasting time like this with these people, you know, hearing Bhagavad Gita and all the scripture and everything, You know, why don't you go for some entertainment? Either people are going for some kind of enjoyment, correct? People want to go for playing cricket. People want to go for some skydiving. People want to go for swimming. People want to roam around with women. Just enjoy life. 
or they go to eat out in some hotel or they go to watch some cinema correct no so you will find the living and days are all driven for sense gratification driven by sense gratification you can see that this is one thing people are aware to do that or they will tell you that we should not waste time like that we should work hard but for making money they will say you agree everybody is like somebody is studying some course somebody is studying some uh, for some competitive exam uh, somebody wants to you know go from this job to this job now he is getting 8 lakh pranam he wants uh, 12 lakh pranam huh? so they think that if i economically we can make my situation better and better that is one type of uh, success in life huh? another thing is sense gratification so these two you will find huh? sense gratification and economic development these two are the two prime goals of common man do you agree anybody has any doubt about this hmm? most of the world is working for that correct na no? so you you will find here what he is saying uh, you will find that the body is a particular model car huh? and like for example a pig is meant to eat what stool huh? and you are meant to eat halwa now if you go and give pig halwa will he eat Whether it's smell, he doesn't like. He doesn't get what he wants, so he will leave it and go. But he will go and eat what stool. You will see that because his body is designed for that. That's what he will eat. In the same manner, Prabhupada says in Ahmedabad there was one Modi in those days. He had practically like you know thousands and thousands of lakhs of people working under him in his company. But he was himself Anguta Chab. He says. Uh, he was himself uh, he would put impression by impression he didn't know how to sign also on the other hand there was a boy with doctorate in chemistry any company he went for a job they told him you are over qualified because you may not stick on to our company so nobody gave him job <laughs> and he started a soap company himself and to deliver the soap also he had nobody so he delivered soap in cycle in a bicycle he was going and delivering the papa is saying look at this fellow uh, doctorate fellow and look at that fellow who is a illiterate fellow i don't know how many of you know i have seen with my eyes some illiterate people don't know how to put signature they take help of their friend to put signature you have seen anybody like that they do that correct na so you know the friend may put anything write anything they don't know but they have trust therefore they do that so he is saying that you will find that in material life people get we can see with our eyes people are getting things very easily smoothly but then why the whole world is driven for these two things for sense gratification even sense gratification is destined also for you uh, whatever you are destined only you will get similarly how much money you are supposed to get you will get it anyway you will get uh, like you will see you know as your body grows your clothes also change correct no you know as the clothes become short it becomes tight so you keep changing the clothes bigger and bigger size correct no similarly your eating quantity also increases as you grow in age uh, up to probably 40 years something 30 year 40 like that it automatically happens at the tight uh, age if marriage has to come marriage will come also hmm? job has to come job will come these things you see that they keep coming in different cross sections of your life hmm? automatically like prahlad says hmm? so then you may ask a question what if i don't do any work if i am lazy will these things come actually you cannot be lazy also you will see that you know why you cannot be lazy because you are destined to do some amount of work you will do that nahi kashi chanam api krishna says one moment also jeeva cannot be lazy so you will do work naturally but when you do that natural work for example every one of you get up in the morning huh? you take a bath you brush your teeth and everything and then when you get ready you are driven by your modes to take up some type of work correct no what the shastra say Uh, every person should work in this world you should not be lazy huh? like uh, like uh, for example arjuna was also told by krishna krishna told him i will guide you uh, how to win the battle but who will fight arjuna will fight or krishna will fight did krishna say arjuna you can go to sleep in the chariot and i will take care did he say that he said you have to fight take initiative but who will guide krishna said i will guide you and that is what lord is telling all of us also he says that i will guide you how to lead your life you lead your life like that then you will be successful and that direction is given in bhagavad gita he gives a very good balance of material spiritual life material life and 
spiritual life balance and if you don't balance you will only invite trouble in your life you will see that for example if somebody becomes one sided in material life headlong you want material success because you are seeing that somebody is 47000 crore somebody is 20000 crores i want to become like them you go headlong you will only break your head that's all will happen nothing much is going to change you can see also many people who have gone headlong for money making and they have got frustrated and committed suicide you will see that whereas krishna is saying that you work 8 hours 10 hours a day whatever comes to you that is lord's prasada to, to you naturally whatever comes your way say for example you get some suffering you go to doctor take some medicine huh? shastras approve of that shastras don't say anyway the suffering has to come don't take any medicine they don't say as a matter of duty do the job as a matter of duty take medicines if you get sick as a matter of duty perform your family duties but this is these are all your side activities this is not the main activity what is the main activity that you have to do the shastras say that you do that activity which is progressive hmm, they say because material progress is zero progress huh? because you will see that the purpose the dogs are running on four legs and you are running on four wheels where is the progress proper that is illusory progress why because you go from now all of you think about your, your own life you know you go into first standard second standard fifth standard tenth standard college engineering college then you may go abroad and you may get a doctorate degree you may start a some company abroad huh? but when you die what will happen to all the things huh? see there was one boy who got uh, you know some 15 lakh per annum huh? good money huh? so his friends became devotees but he used to ridicule at his friends he said hey, look at you guys you are all stuck with chanting hare krishna and all this thing wasting your time look at me i am getting 15 lakh per annum so of course he worked for about 4 years how much he must have earned yeah he made 60 lakhs in 4 years suddenly covid came struck he died that now in 4 years what he has done he moved the money from his company's account to another bank account and he died and went away that's all <laughs> this is what all the jeevas are doing <clears throat> they are moving money from one place to another place and then they are going away that's all on the other hand his friends chanted hare krishna correct no whatever situation got they knew that materially you cannot do much in this world chant hare krishna every mala you chant you are making a forward progress from bhuloka to goloka you are making one one step every day every day you are going going one step second step that is real progress material progress means everything you accumulate will be left behind you can't carry anything just like in the airport sometimes we used to carry this ghee bottle you know uh, or sometimes we used to carry this knife uh, or sometimes this uh, shaving uh, blade and all that so they would screen all of this you have seen that in the airport similarly at the time of death what all will be screened when we leave the body anybody all the money bank balance will be no left behind uh, that will be screened you are not allowed to take with you correct no yeah our relatives you cannot take what about the emi we paid for the house can we take that you know we may say 20 years i paid emi no you cannot take the house you can't take relatives you can't take the bank balance uh, you can't take the degree also hmm. now what what do you carry with you hmm. karma only carry that to punya karma papa karma and bhakti karma punya karma will be gradually 5 4 3 2 1 0 it will be finished in the next life when you go to heaven huh? and papa karma also minus 5 minus 4 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 0 it will get over huh? both are diminishing account correct no then what is the account which is undiminishing account, account? bhakti account that's the only thing that will go with you actually that bhakti account is increased life after life gradually one will once eyes will be opened to see what is this world see nowadays modern man is presenting the uh, school textbooks in such a way that man is the center of the universe and everyone and everything should revolve around man like it is presenting like i saw one picture one man is standing very big man and around him all this flora and fauna all the gardens and greenery and everything animals everything is put which means he is saying everything in this world is meant for man's enjoyment like that they are presenting in schools utterly foolish is it true huh? how utterly foolish in the man's place pluck out this man throw him out put krishna there huh? 
because everything is meant for whose pleasure krishna's pleasure god because everything is owned by him everything is created by him the he shastra say that initially he creates millions of universes huh? and then he enters into each universe and he enters every single atom he enters huh? then he creates 8.4 million species and he enters into every species huh? the heart of every living being and not a blade of grass can move huh? without your sanction you can look at the sun rising in the morning sun setting in the evening seasons changing and the flowers blooming who is doing all this huh? how modern man is utterly foolish huh? putting himself in the center hmm? that's a biggest blunder because he thinks he is the center he thinks that work hard and enjoy that is his slogan correct no two things only he is doing he is working hard for fruity activities and he wants to enjoy sense gratification correct no man modern man doesn't know anything beyond that work hard or hard for what what purpose make money make money make money correct no money 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 is honey huh? and after making money then eat drink and be merry just enjoy life so this these two directions what modern man is taking money making actually there's no two direction only one direction only sense gratification only direction because money is also for what sense gratification you will see that so you will find the more man headed towards sense gratification uh, the world became a messy place you will see that now ukraine and russian war is going on because man and man you know family and family country and country this wars come because the question comes which man will enjoy i showed you one man is in the middle who is that man <laughs> correct na no? we will enjoy or america will enjoy russia will enjoy huh? correct pakistan will enjoy or india will enjoy correct na no? similarly there is one kaveri river between tamil nadu and karnataka tamil nadu will enjoy or karnataka will enjoy correct na no? there is a fight between caste people between state people between country people between economic bracket people between communists and capitalist so everybody is thinking about who will enjoy i will enjoy you will enjoy nobody is talking about who's enjoyment krishna's enjoyment because they have they are so blind to see that they don't know whom it belongs to and they just don't ask this question so therefore you will find that uh, when we talk about um, spiritual life um, or yoga uh, people may think that we will go on these people are foolish we will go on with our money making sense gratification Yes, you go. Let us wait and watch your future. Watch your future. Huh? You will see the whole world is heading towards that. Uh, uh, what do you what do you call downward spiral, huh? which everyone is going into. That's called materialism. Huh? So we don't want to join materialism. Therefore, you will find Arjuna is the true hero, or Hanuman is the true hero, huh? because they took guidance from the Lord on how to lead their life. Huh? Uh, he says, "Maa manusmari yudha chay." Do your duties in this world, but don't get infatuated. with simply materialistic lifestyle hmm. there is another very very vital goal in your life for which you are sent in this world hmm. like for example company gives you a car if somebody washes the car very nicely huh, puts air in the tire puts water in the radiator it's all very good huh, keeping the car well correct no but that's not the goal of company giving you a car what you should do with the car use it for company's purpose do the business of the company similarly nowadays you find there are people who are refined to sense gratifiers yeah. who are the people they say that no 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 you know don't uh, suffer this body with overworking the body yeah. eating all kinds of smoking drinking and uh, drugs and all that don't put keep the body very clean go to yoga studios yeah. and learn yoga asanas do pranayam you know, do asanas and keep the body very hale and healthy keep it very fit or go to gym yeah. you know do gym activities and keep a very atta katta body keep it very strong is it the goal of life huh? see this, this is only the preliminary step of making the body healthy and fit for another very important purpose what is that purpose huh huh yeah if you see yama niyama pranayama asana does everything end there after that comes pratyahara dharana dhyana samadhi huh? actually many of this yoga studios how they started initially man did bhoga and he got frustrated got sick then he got roga when he got roga then all yoga came because now our baba what baba ramdev baba is teaching if you have back pain you do this yoga correct no if you have that disease you do this yoga so now yoga has become more or less a medical solution 
to the bodily problems. Is it the goal of yoga? What is the meaning of yoga? Huh? Yuj. Yuj means to connect. And yoga means to connect with God. Huh? So, are they teaching people to, uh, how to go back to God by connecting with God? Or are they teaching them as a small self-serving program for the, curing the diseases? What are they teaching? Yeah. Self-serving program just for curing diseases. Hmm? That's all they are doing. You see. That means there are people who are gross sense gratifiers. Eat, drink and be merry. Smoke, drink, take drugs. That is one level. And more finer sense gratifiers are who? Those who do yoga and have a very fine, very nice, healthy, smart, slim body and then do what? Sense gratification. Hmm? These are finer, more subtle sense gratifiers. Hmm? Now, there, there are people who say, Actually, you know, we are not sense gratifiers. You know, we are not ordinary fruity workers. Fruity worker means one who works for results and money and everything. Now, now we, we, we want to do social service. There are people. So, they appear to be very nice people, you know, because they are doing something for the society. So, Prabhupada uses two words, concentrated sense gratification, extended sense gratification, he says. For example, jump, somebody joins a Brahman Sangha and want to do service for Brahman Sangha. Why is he doing? Because I am Brahman. And I will serve all the brahmanas. Correct, no? Yeah. So, he wants to only promote who that, that particular thing only. Similarly, if somebody is an Indian, he says, I am working for the poor Indians, he says. That is called the extended sense gratification, we call it. What is extended sense gratification? Actually, he is rendering service to you and rendering service to them. There is not much difference. Yeah. It appears to be like a very nice... Uh, uh, selfless service. It is ultimately it is an extension of your own body only. Huh? Papa is saying that, and there is a reason. For example, anything material you give anybody, hmm? if you are giving uniform to school children, next life you will be a textile mill owner. That's all. Huh? Material punya brings back material profits. That's all. It doesn't do anything for the soul. Huh? If you are giving notebooks, you become printing press owner. Huh? Other, you don't get anything spiritual by that. So, therefore, in Prabhupada's books, you will find some very amazing, extraordinary presentation. You will find what the Shastras are teaching us, what the original intention of the Shastra is. You will find, yesterday we were reading uh, the third chapter of the 10th canto, that Krishna is appearing in this world, Krishna Janmashtami Day. Correct, right, no? When he appears, the jail of uh, Vasudeva and the jail of Kamsa, Vasudeva and Devaki in front of them, his body is glowing uh, like a brilliant like tube light you put on in a dark room. Uh, and as soon as he appears, immediately the crescent moon becomes full moon. Uh, you will find all the peacocks in the forest start uh, cooing and dancing. All the cuckoos are cooing. Uh, uh, and, uh, and the devatas like uh, uh, Vidyadharis and Apsaras, they are dancing in the sky. And the Gandharvas are singing. Uh, and the rishis and munis are all chanting, loud chant of the Vedic mantras. Huh? They are chanting. And on earth, where there was no yajna happening because of Kamsa's evil nature, now yajnas have started happening. Brahmanas have become very confident now. Huh? And the reservoirs are full of water, lotuses and lilies, ducks and swans. Huh? All of them very joyful. Huh? And all the people are moving hither and thither with great joy. Huh? So, there is a very nice uh, uh, description uh, about, about Krishna's appearance. So, he is actually the number one boss of the whole universe. He is the creator of the universe. Huh? And when he is coming, all the living beings in the whole universe uh, who are actually created uh, to serve him and by that service, experience happiness. For example, my hand wants to experience happiness. And then I take a lead and put it in the belly, then the hand gets happiness. Huh? Not that by doing like this, hand will be happy. Hmm? Can hand alone become happy? And that's what the whole world is thinking. All people geared towards money and sense gratification, they all are trying to enjoy like this. Hand says, I got the laddu, so I will enjoy it. Why should I give to belly? That's, that's their idea. But Shastras say, you are not independent. You are part and parcel of Krishna. The part can only enjoy by serving the whole. Huh? When I take the ladder and put it in the belly, then the hand becomes strong. Huh? You get strength. But if the hand, uh, hand refuses to serve, it keeps doing like this. You will never enjoy. Like one time, uh, a dog got a big nariel, you know. The farmer said, hey, give it to me. 
I'll break open it and give it. I'll drink the coconut water and you take the coconut. And the dog said, no, nothing doing. It's mine. I will not give it. Said, so do you think he got, you got to eat the coconut? He couldn't eat it because he was keeping it with himself. Similarly, we work hard, make money, keep it with ourselves, hold on to it like that fellow. Find money and put it in the back account, went away. <laughs> That's what will happen to everybody in this world. But if you are giving a portion of it to Krishna, huh, then it comes back to you thousands of times back. You will see that. Then you make spiritual progress. Anything you give to Krishna, you make spiritual progress. Even if you give a lotus, I mean, even if you give a tulasi leaf, if you give some milk, if you keep some rice and offer it to him, or if you give some wealth, of course, Krishna will also see how much you are holding back huh? and how much are you giving. That also he will see. Wholeheartedly, anybody gives anything to Krishna, like chanting also. It's an offering. Huh? It's a prayer. So, those uh, who are very intelligent will understand this whole universe is made by somebody. For example, your bike is standing down. Can other friend come and take the bike and go? What is the first thing he has to do? Ask, Ask you. Huh? Because you want it. What is pick up a bike? Even a pen also. Can somebody put his hand in your pocket and take away the pen if he wants? Huh? He has to you know, ask you, hey, can I use your pen, please? Huh? And you say yes. Then only you take it. Isn't it? So, we are very careful when we use the things of other people in this world. But what about God and uh, God? One man told Prabhupada, Swamiji, you are saying that I have taken all the building materials from God and made this house and therefore this house belongs to God. You are saying like that. But I don't know that these materials like the cement and brick and reinforced bars, all these things belong to God. I don't know. Like that the man said. And then Prabhupada asked him, do you know that they don't belong to you? He asked. What is the answer for that? Ah, that man agreed, yes. That means it belongs to somebody. Like that he said. See how logic, Prabhupada's logic is powerful. Who can say what I said just now? You heard me well. Let us hear from the Kothro devotees. Give the mic to them. Those three, four devotees are MMCOE. Huh? They will tell us. What I said just now, the example I said. Oh, he's a section of devotee thing. Huh? How many rounds you chant? Six rounds you chant. Oh, then you can also say, no problem. Any, any four of you, any one of you. Uh, he has heard it. Yeah, you give it to him. Give the mic to him. अगर एकादा कोई बंदा घर बांध रहा है तो हाँ. उनको पूछा गया कि ये बिल्डिंग माइक पर नहीं निकट है हरे कृष्णा हाँ. ये बिल्डिंग बन रहा है तुम्हारा तो उनका जो सीमेंट कंक्रीट जो कुछ यूज हुआ है एनफोर्समेंट बार वो तुम आपका है क्या तो वो बोलता है आ, नहीं है पहले वो बोला तुमने कृष्ण से चोरी किया है हाँ, हाँ. वो आगे वाला बोला तो वो बोलता है नहीं कृष्ण से चोरी नहीं किया तो अगली बार वो बोलता है सो इट इज बिलोंग टू यू इट्स एग्री फॉर दैट नो इट इज नॉट बिलोंग करेक्ट uh, then what is the conclusion? If it doesn't belong to you, then? It is ultimately belong to someone else. Ah, and the someone else is Krishna. Yes. You may or may not know. You are not knowing is another thing. Uh, correct, no? Okay, very good. Hari Bhor. For example, say you went to the shopping mall hmm, to buy something. And you went walking, your leg was paining. After buying, when you came out, you saw one bike was standing. You checked whether it's locked or not. It was not locked. Then you took the scooter and came. Is it all right? And the owner is coming running behind you. Huh? Hey, 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 who's that? Chor, chor, chor is calling. He said, Sir, my leg was paining, so I took the bike. Can you take like that? No, you have to, you have to tell him, Sir, I can. Actually, my leg is paining. Can you give me a lift? Huh? So you can sit behind, he'll give you a lift. You can't take anybody's thing without. Uh, but when it comes to God, man takes everything from nature. Correct or not? He's taking and enjoying, correct? No? So, this is the first truth said in the scriptures. Everything belongs to God, nothing belongs to us. But we are given a quota to enjoy. What you can take. There are things sanctioned for you. You can accept. Uh, and you can sanctify them and accept it. Uh, what is the meaning of sanctifying? If God is allotting you something, food is sanctioned, vegetarian food. But then you offer it to Krishna, sanctify it and then you accept it. Uh, in that way then, uh, in that way you are making spiritual progress. Spiritual progress is a real progress because this life you made 20% progress. Next life you start from 21%. If you made it up to 60, you start from 61%. And that is the reason we are all sitting here today. Because we have done something in the past, um, which is in our account. Due to which we are understanding the subject very well. Correct, no? Otherwise, you won't even understand what I am speaking. Huh? This is understandable to only those people who have already been practicing spiritual life. 
and you are continuing gradually we will come to 80 100% when you are 100% purified you go back to god at we take off and and that progress is ultimate progress because once and for all you reach there hmm? otherwise the material progress in this world so then what we should do in this world you will see that when you when i say that you should offer everything to god see you have to align with krishna's teachings and scriptures but our mind doesn't cooperate mind gives lot of problem because mind is identifying with what mind if makes you feel your soul or your body uh mind identifies with the body therefore krishna says in bhagavad gita uddare edatmanatmanam atmanam mavasadayet atmaiva hi atmano bandur atmaiva puratmana he says make mind your friend not make mind your enemy or make mind your servant don't allow mind to be your master he says what is the meaning of that say if you are sitting in a car behind if you tell the driver take me to temple he takes me to liquor shop huh? that means who is in control you are in control or he is in control driver is in control correct no on the other hand you tell him take me to temple he takes to temple that means he is he is your master or servant make mind your servant then you are called goswami if you make mind your master then you are godas so when we allow mind to become our master it becomes stout and strong then mind becomes uncontrollable huh? mind will tell you go to that shop at 12 o'clock at night eat this food huh? drink this liquor smoke this cigarette eat that tobacco you know go behind this girl even if she kicks you on the face huh? you know, go behind her huh? you will have to cut a sari figure because mind is driving you like that so most of the people are servants of mind or masters of mind that means if you are materialistic people they are servants of mine mm-hmm. and those people who become krishna conscious then krishna says that if you surrender to me you become enlightened and with with the enlightenment you will be able to control the mind actually how the control happens is everything becomes spiritualized senses become spiritualized when you do rishikesh and rishikesh sevana when you serve the lord mind becomes purified by chanting hare krishna correct no buddhi becomes sanctified by studying the scriptures ego becomes sanctified when you live amongst devotees and adjust yourself huh? yeah many times uh, when you are living amongst devotees you have to cooperate correct no not that you live in your own independent bungalow huh? you live with others like one boy was telling that you know when i come to the your center i can stay in your center by i need a separate room he said i i can't uh, tolerate anybody so we said if you want a separate independent facility you have to stay nearby huh? because inside everybody stays together correct no? you have to stay with everybody so in this way senses mind intelligence ego everything can be purified hmm? and all this is possible when you when the soul practices adhyatma vidya hmm? which is gita and bhagavatam it's like putting iron rod in fire when you put iron rod in fire it becomes like fiery when uh, the soul uh, is uh, is woken up hmm? just like the sun rises in the morning the whole world everybody wakes up when transcendental knowledge awakens in our heart we get woken up immediately when you rub your eyes and you wake up all the truths become very clear oh krishna is the owner of everything lord vasudeva or lord krishna and he is the center pivot of the all existence he has created millions of universes he is actually feeding the food to 8.4 million species of life he says aham bija pradhapita is the father of everyone and everything and his eyes are you know wide open he never blinks the eyes he is watching everywhere he is watching everyone and he is worthy of worship and worthy of uh, service huh? why because he is the most loving father he gives everything free huh? he is giving rains free sunlight free huh? he is giving fruits free grains free huh? he is giving me a platform to sit free uh, he has given me clothes to wear he has given me house so he has given me so many things even without my you know deserving them i have uh, rebelled against him turned away from him still he has provided me all these things huh? so we should feel gratitude huh? for him and turn towards him and that's why he says that if company has given you a car use the car in company service and not just decorate the car or clean the car or wash the car or keep watching the car do something with the car for the company similarly the body should be used for uh, the purpose of practicing devotion service and also as i told you these are two routes one route is you know sense gratification and fruitive activities that is one route which 99% of the world is going and another route is spiritual practices or yoga abhyas 
which is suppose yoga actually yogi means one who controls the mind not that he you know he can eat any time and sleep any time and enjoy anything that's not a yogi yogi means yukta hara viharasya yukta chesha sakam so clean life he has to lead a very clean life huh? so then you walk that yoga uh, true yogi path bhakti yogi path huh? and that path is progressive it takes you back home and back to godhead now see this pure knowledge what we are talking now from the scriptures is a reality but it is a hidden reality for the common people no huh? common people cannot uh, they don't have the eyes to see this because what is most appealing for anybody if i show you a chocolate in one hand and a 500 rupee note on the other which will you, which one will you choose hmm. of course you will choose 500 because you know that inside this 500 rupee there are 500 chocolates huh? whereas a child will choose which one uh, because for a child something instant pleasure is important whereas you will find the sensory education is instant pleasure and very quickly the pain also will come it will follow every one of the sensory education you will see that but most of the people will choose which one chocolate correct na no? they will not choose the 500 rupee note therefore the preacher's job is a very difficult job it's a thankless task to go to the living entities and open their eyes and tell them see what a glorious life awaits you you know here you are thinking you are doing sensory education you are slogging like one boy was working in you know, hinjawadi he was selling he was getting you know 45000 he was getting uh, within uh, first two years itself when he was working in those days company told him 14 hours you are working add two more hours they told him make it 16 when we'll give you 50000 uh, they told him so he became greedy uh, so he told his wife asked his wife what we should do she said no problem two more hours finish off make it 50 make it round figure huh? so he started working 50 as soon as he worked 16 hours he started getting stiff neck and back pain you know ulcers in the mouth you know so many complications in the body mm-hmm. and he was surprised why all these things are coming he went to the doctor doctor said every month you have to spend 5000 rupees huh? for the treatment <laughs> right now now did he make any profit he made one profit what is the profit the diseases in the body by overworking because his body is not meant for see nature is made in such a way that you do anything little against nature no immediately it will boomerang you will see that for example one day you liked samosa very much you ate eight samosas you ate next day morning it will show up correct no like one time you know somebody brought in one station you know mango juice you know very nice aam ras they brought in summer season one time so some people were passing in the train they when the train stopped in the station they brought a big jar of amras so these fellows are so fond of amras they gave one glass two glass three glass and some of the fellows were drinking six six eight eight glasses huh? and the serving person was asking is it all right you really can take so much they said no it's very good it's very good it's too good keep giving keep giving they went on drinking drinking while next day morning there was a big noise in the bathroom huh? went ah because practically blood was coming from behind huh? drinking too much you will see that huh? you, you will see that the tendency to enjoy huh? yeah, first you enjoy then you suffer that's the way the world is made so we have to be able to show the living entity is a thankless task because 95% of the living entities want to just keep hovering on the material platform they just don't know spiritual platform so to be able to see the spiritual platform by studying the shastra and hearing from one's guru and then practice it oneself strictly and seriously and teach it to others huh? it's a very important thing when shri prabhupad was in america one class he was talking to boys and girls he said you know all my god brothers are in vrindavan they are very happily you know for celebrating festivals only i have left them and come here to america i am feeling great separation from vrindavan like the prabhupad said one girl asked papa swami ji then why did you come here better you should have stayed in vrindavan if that is the place you like the most and papa said if i didn't come here how would you become devotee papa asked and then she understood yeah that's a correct point a good point and then papa said for a devotee even though a devotee may be feeling separation from vrindavan it is as good as being in vrindavan because the spiritual platform if you are feeling separation from krishna you are with krishna because that kind of uh, uh, bliss krishna will uh, fill up the heart of the devotee hmm. so remembering 
Like Akurura was entering Vrindavan. He was remembering Krishna, Balaram, cows, calves, Vrindavan, Jashodananda. How Krishna exchanges love with all the devotees. So that meditation itself is purifying yeah? and uh, bliss producing and elevating. Yeah? So, but then Prabhupada said, why am I here? Because my special master sent me on the task of preaching in America, he said, yeah? and making you know, devotees and trying to help the conditioned souls who are suffering to go back home, back to Godhead. Huh? So this is the task I have been given. And I may be struggling all alone here. It may not be very pleasing to my mind. But this is what is the right thing to do. And by doing this, I will learn the blessings of my special master. And in the same manner, there are devotees, many, many devotees sitting here. They have been in Gigi uh, Voice before, where we have 30, 40, 50 devotees huh? many times. Chanting, dancing, a big program in the morning. Huh? But uh, when you have to leave one big center and come to a small center, hmm, you know, it's not very pleasing to mind. You may feel that, you know, oh, oh, our life was so jolly there. There are two, three problems in going to a new place. The one problem is, earlier, you know, many other devotees will do many things. You don't have to do everything. Huh? You can just leave it to them. Whereas when you go to a new center, everything you have to do. Everything will come on you, from smallest thing to the biggest thing, everything you have to do, all type of services. Huh? It was a small place. Sometimes cook has run away, then you have to cook also. Huh? Sometimes you have to wash the parts, you have to get the grocery, you have to put up the center, you know, pay the rent, everything you have to do. Another thing is, in a big center, if somebody is missing a morning program, it won't show up so much. <laughs> because the number is very big, correct, no? 40 devotees are there, if 4 devotees didn't come, nobody knows who didn't come, correct, no? In a small center, everybody will notice who is not there. Correct, no? Immediately, where is Prabhuji? Go and check. Huh? Prabhuji is uh, alive or dead or what? Huh? <laughs> huh? Correct, no? <laughs> Immediately, check. So, you have to be exemplary in the morning program. Correct, no? When everyone has to come for the morning program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another thing is, <clears throat> you have a desire to expand the center and make it bigger. But that will not happen very easily unless you make an effort. You go out, meet the people, you know, and distribute books or distribute flyers, you know, bring them to the classes, conduct many classes. It, it, it involves preaching. It's a very difficult task because somebody will come one class and two classes they won't come. Huh? And sometimes once a month they come. The living entities are all, as I told you, running after sense gratification and money. Huh? They will say, we have no time. Actually, for sense gratification money, they have all the time they are spending. But at the end of life, that is not going to come back to serve them. But they can't see it. Just see. Huh? So the, the spiritual life is such an amazing life. If you lead a spiritual life now, it will also make your material life better. Like for example, many of our boys who are eating meat and taking tobacco, smoking cigarette, drinking and all, they completely gave up all the habits. Now they can look back and say that, oh, what kind of dirty life I was leading before. They lead a clean life now, pure life. They have cultivated pure habits now. Mm. Similarly, there, there are boys who are caught by loose girls who were looting their pocket. Huh? So there were some women who would speak very sweetly and empty their pocket daily. Huh? Yeah. When they became devotees, they kicked off such association. They said, get lost, enough, I know your tricks now. Huh? Uh, now I am a devotees now, Harakshana devotees, I am very happy. One penny you cannot touch from my pocket. Huh? Now the girl understood, now I have to go to another boy now. Huh? This fellow will not give money anymore. Huh? Because he has become Goswami now. He is no more Godas. Huh? Yeah. You will see that. So you will find uh, when, you, when you become Krishna conscious, you can take control of your life in your hands. Huh? When control of your life is in your hands, then you can direct your my mind. Hey, do this. This is yes to Krishna, no to Maya. Huh? You can say like that. And also life becomes very disciplined, orderly, focused, concentrated. And... Uh, Material goals also become very easy to achieve. Hmm? Like if you focus, this is what I want to achieve. There are many of our devotees, you know, they want to do gate and go for masters. They went to Hyderabad, you know, two, three months they studied and cracked and got into IIT. Went abroad, came back and joined college as a big professor. Many of them, you will see that. Our devotees are, actually those devotees are very disciplined in their habits and devotional life. The same discipline comes in academic life also. They are very focused and they achieve success in both fields, yeah? in spiritual field and material field also. And they don't have to worry. And even if the material life sometimes is not getting better, they want to worry. Why? 
because that is only temporary situation huh? like for example let us imagine one boy is average boy he he only got 60% he is struggling for a job at last he got some mediocre job but in devotional life he is 16 now there huh? he is following four religious principles he is with devotees taking part doing books me all is doing huh? gradually the body is getting older and older for one day the body will be gone huh? and then he is out of the body go back to god huh? so just because he was mediocre in material life he is not a big loser Hmm. and not doing spiritual life he is a big loser huh? because material life whether you are a hero or a, all heroes in material life become zeros huh? as they get older and older correct no you find they will become a non entity you can say huh? even big heroes i am telling you you know big big cinema heroes and uh, cricket heroes you know after some years you will find they will only be seen in advertisements huh? billboards you will find that too with white hair also huh? you'll find they'll appear old also you'll find eventually from there also they'll be gone you will not see them all the heroes in this world become zeros over a period of time material life ultimately you know takes everybody like uh, it is said the time is a devourer of everyone in this world you know the jet black hair turns into white hair hmm? the clean faces turn into wrinkled faces hmm. young people become old people and the old people they are taken to the graveyard unwantingly and the bodies are burned And the soul comes out with uh, what? With these three things: punya, papa, and bhakti. And punya, papa is a diminishing account, useless account. So therefore, the bhakti is a real account. Hmm? So one should be able to see the futility of material life, especially sense gratification and the fruity mentality. Hmm? Fruity mentality actually means uh, uh, accumulating, accumulating so many things. Hmm? After seeing that, and be, when you become a serious devotee. then in material life you will have moderation you will not be greedy why you won't be greedy you know that i have done my work i am getting this much and i will my life is going on you will be happy in that so then some boys ask a question that means you say you can't be ambitious in material life you can be ambitious but you can't be over ambitious over ambition means you are going to like we say when when you go from need to greed you have to bleed Huh? you will see that so uh, there is a need basic need we are talking okay little above the need you want you can achieve but you become too greedy you will bleed in material life and that material life is very painful also hmm? and we have seen how the world is people in the world are living so they make spiritual life zero huh? and material life they want to only progress one it's called one sided material approach hiranya and kashipu hiranya means uh, gold kashipu means woman So here in Nagashipu, he wanted money and woman, or money and sense gratification. That's all. So if anybody is working for that, they are called tiny here in Nagashipu. That's all. Huh? Yeah, we want to be here in Nagashipu or Prahlad. So ask yourself, was Prahlad a failure in life? Just because he became Krishna devotee? Huh? You will see Prahlad after here in Nagashipu was killed. Prahlad became king of the world. He was also ruling the world. What is the first thing he did as a king? Anybody knows? as soon as he was put on the throne by brahma ji a lord a lord narsimha told brahma ji to make him the coronate him as a king as soon as he sat on the king's throne and brahma vishnu shiva all of them went back to their abodes what is the first thing he did the first thing is he called his ministers and said take me in the chariot to meet the saintly persons huh? i want to go on a world tour so he came to melukottai near that there's a rishabh hills huh? he there he met avadut brahman in sound canto and he sat down and learned many nice things from him so this is a devotee huh? even though devotee is very opulent also he is a king of the world but he is associating with saintly people and learning nice things and he is keeping the praja very happy unlike who irena kashu irena kashu who is the center i am the center everything should revolve around me everyone should be at my beck and call as i told modern man is also like which one prahlad or irena kashu ha huh. But Prabhupada is teaching us to become. Uh, so Prahlad put who at the center? Krishna at the center. So therefore, when Lord Narasimha asked Prahlad, "What do you want, Prahlad? You have done so much devotion to me." Prahlad said, "No, no, my Lord. Huh? He said, uh, what is that famous verse? Maam prlo bhayot patya saktam kame shu tair varehi tat sangabhito nirbindo mamukshutvam upashita ha yadidasya zime kaman varam stumbar darshava." Kamanam hriya samrogham bhavatastu vrinevaram. He's saying like this. Huh? He's saying that 
uh, one more verse he says hmm. raja sevaka yoriva he says you are like a raja i am like a sevak uh, and he says that if you really want to give me something yadi dasya se me kaman give me one thing he says in my heart still there are some impurities remove those impurities he said make me a clean pure devotee like that prahlad is saying prahlad is completely satisfied lord is making him king of the world he prahlad didn't ask prahlad said tell the lord lord my father is dead would you like to make me the king did he ask but without asking lord made him the king next another example you take dhruva maharaj you know he had the kingdom available next to his father uttanapad he would have been the king of the world but there was a competition for that post correct na no? with whom with his cousin brother yeah? with his step mother son uttama and then in the competition he got burnt out you know, he became like a I man uh, ir- uh, irritated so he came to the forest saw lord vishnu and then he became king of what anybody knows dhruva got what benediction you know where dhruva loka in the morning do you see the pole star it is an unblinking star huh? so dhruva loka is greater than satya loka also satya loka is the planet where the lord's first created son stays who is he who brahma correct yeah brahma stays there is brahma loka so you can there be a planet better than brahma's loka if you want to know you study in bhagavatam brahma loka has palace if you see what are the what what coral and emerald and rubies the palace is made and also there are many other benefits of going into the palace your age will not grow if you are inside the palace you will and also there is no sweating uh, there is no the temperature is very ideal and the minds will become cheerful also there are many things at the subtle level also happens in brahma's palace like that uh, soothing feeling will be obtained there you can read that bhagavatam says that but that is brahma loka beyond brahma loka there is an akaprishna which is uh, dhruva loka that was attained by dhruva again dhruva was headlong going in spiritual life or material life spiritual life he went to lord vishnu and vishnu gave him both material success and spiritual success for prahlad also he got both material success and spiritual success one last example i will take and conclude there was one very powerful muni who was a uh, you know ashtanga yogi he could fly on air he could walk on water he would sleep in cave he would sometimes sleep in the bank of a river very austere he wore only a loin cloth and he had long beard long mustache and he was very proud of his austerities and this muni one day came to the court of ambrish maharaj who is that fellow grahasta muni yeah and he thought look at this fellow he is a grahasta huh? he is a married man wearing royal clothes and royal jewelry in his body and ruling the whole world surrounded by elephants and horses and everything he must be materialistic huh? he is simply a vishayi like that he thought so he got on his case for some small petty thing and he wanted to kill him kill the king you know you drank the charanamrit before offering food to the guest so he took some clumps of hair and threw it on the ground he created a big demon huh? to kill ambarish maharaj but ambarish was a pure krishna devotee so he was completely controlled in the mind his mind was very calm cool collected because he was always thinking of krishna sabai mana krishna padaravindi he just prayed to krishna my dear lord i think my death has come now i am ready to accept the death he said or if i have to live i will live but akya krishna mare ke mai krishna rakhe ke and the next moment you can hear the past time in the ninth canto you know surshan chakra came sent by lord vishnu uh, to protect ambarish and this muni had to run from pillar to post <laughs> he was such a powerful muni that he could go inside water inside cave all over the world and he could go to even paravyama huh? where he even went to vaikuntha loka entered vaikuntha and even met lord vishnu one on one can you imagine how powerful this fellow is dhruva huh? samani despite being so powerful at last he was sent back taking a u turn from there he came back to ambarish maharaj and fell at his feet and clasped his feet then only he was forgiven huh? so you can see how much powerful krishna devotee is over a yogi nowadays people are attracted to going to yoga studio they should come to these classes huh? and man follow in the footsteps of ambarish maharaj correct na no? because you want to be a devotee like ambarish or a muni like uh, durvas muni which appears very impressive for the common people yeah <laughs> isn't it oh you know he's sitting he's looking like a very powerful rishi eh? 
Muni and the soul had to run from pillar to post. You saw that. Huh? So even therefore Muktanam Pisidhanam Narayana Parayana, there's one verse. You all repeat after me. Huh? Muktanam Pisidhanam Narayana Parayana Sudurlabha Prashantatma Koti Shwapi Mahamune Amongst Koti Koti Muktas and Siddhas, huh? Mukta Purushas and Siddha Purushas. A yeah, Krishna devotee is one, he's saying. It's very, very rare. Hmm. So, Ambarish is a very beautiful example. Because some of you, especially new boys who are young, in the second year of uh, MMCOE, you may tend to think that, oh, he is saying that spiritual life is all important and material life is useless, sense gratification and fruity mentality. But yeah, I am giving you an example of Ambarish Maharaj because Griheshu, Dhareshu, Suteshu, Bandushu, Dupottama Sandana Vadi Vaji Vastushu, <clears throat> Akshaya Ratna Baranam Paradishu, Ananta Kojeshu, Akarot Asan Matim. Like that, there is a verse which says Ambarish Maharaj was surrounded by uh, Griheshu. He was living in a Grihastashrama, uh, which means he had many queens. Uh, Dareshu means wives, Suteshu, children, Bandushu. Friends and relatives, huh? And uh, uh, Dvipottamas Chandana Vaji Vastushu means he had golden chariots and he had horses and he had big elephants on the top of which he used to sit, huh? And also Akshaya Ratnabara, Akshaya Ratnabara Ambara Nadishu is saying, huh? He had uh, very, very costly dresses to wear, garments. And he had many ornaments also, huh? In his body he used to wear, Mukut and everything he used to wear, huh? Ananta Kosheshu means inexhaustible treasury. Uh, that Kajana was very big also. Crores of rupees he had. Uh, he was king of the world. Correct, no? And then he's saying, Akarot Asan Matim. But he considered all these things to be material, temporary, and he knew that they will all be finished. Therefore, he was not attached to them. Rather, he was attracted to Krishna. So he would go to the Krishna temple in the morning, clean the floor, or do the arati for the Lord take darshan of the deities, chant the holy name uh, and perform aratis like what you are all doing. He would do that also. Although he was a king of the whole world, he was an intelligent fellow. He knew that he was holding on to the permanent or temporary. You, you, should, you should hold on to which one? Temporary one or permanent one? Yeah. Like one time, we went in a train. So, we were sitting in the train. Three hours passed and the train was not moving at all in one station. Then we asked why. They said the, sometimes the long train, at one place they cut it and connect to another train. And then that portion goes. Correct, no? And this portion will remain here only. Correct, no? Uh, actually, our devotee was saying that actually they, they don't belong to this. They had boarded this train only. But he, they came to these bogies to talk to some people. And the, they thought it was one train only. They thought like that. So this remained here only. <laughs> you know? And this, uh, they connected it to another engine and that went. How many of you know they do that in India? You know that? Yeah. So you should be in your place only. <laughs> Correct? No? Similarly, you want to hold on to temporary or permanent? You want to hold on to the stunted life or the progressive life? Mm. So spiritual life is progressive life. A material life is stunted life. Why? Even though you make a lot of tamasha, tshim, 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 everything you show, finally, like that. Huh? Everything is left behind and gone. I, I remember this. Uh, we had one toy. We used to, this much toy. So you give key to the toy. Huh? After you give the key, ting tong, ting tong, not nodding the head also like this. Ting tong, ting tong, ting tong, ting tong. After the key gets over, what will happen? Ting. That's all. It remains like this. Our bodies are like that only. Huh? As long as the Atma is there, ting tong, everybody is doing. Huh? The Atma is gone. That's all. They'll remain like that. It'll be finished. Huh? Then the body also remains behind, house remains behind, laptop remains behind, scooter remains behind, and company job remains behind, bank balance definitely remains behind. Eh? Nothing goes, and the Atma goes, naked soul comes out. Therefore, you should worry about the progress of the soul. Right from the time, as soon as you get awakened, one should work for the progress of the soul. And that's real intelligence. Thanks to Srila Prabhupada for making the subject so simple for us, through his purports and everything. Eh? Prahlad is explained to his friends, Are sukam aindriya kam daite, are indriya sukh to asana se mil jayega tumko. Sarvata labbete daivat, he is saying. Daivat means destiny. According to destiny, whatever you deserve to get, it will come to you. Without a big struggle. 
don't do big struggle but at the same time we should do average amount of effort one should put hmm? for example you all are students every day when you come from the college at least one or two hours you should study regularly when there is a preparatory leave you can study 8 10 hours you can study but there are boys who are studying 16 hours eh? 18 hours like that there are people studying like that or there are people uh, actually uh, uh, there are people who burn out also correct no yeah and eventually you'll find like one boy some or other want to get into computer science eh? he got mechanical you know he got electronics but he want to computer science with great amount of struggle in 2 3 years he appeared and at last he could get in eh? he got into iit he got into computer science but in iit everybody is a big head in computer science when he went in the third year he got very tense because he had a aspiration for computer science but he was not able to make up with that level of people so his parents had lot of expectation from him and uh, you know his friends were all going ahead he was left behind he thought hey, electronics was better mechanical was better i could tackle those guys and after going to, it's like you know you are walking on a tight rope we call it no Like imagine if there's a rope from here to there, you walk in the middle, and suddenly you realize I should not have come here. <laughs> to go go back is difficult. <laughs> you know, it became like that for him. So he got a mental disease. Huh? He had to take off from the college for two years. Huh? His parents had to take him to some mental hospital. Huh? So that means if you try to change your destiny and try to work over hard and do something, then something else will happen only. Huh? So do average work. but don't be lazy laziness is condemned by krishna also in bhagavad gita huh? he says karyate hi avashyak karma sarva prakriti jay guna hai huh? every living entity has to work but if you don't do any work and let us see let us uh, take the same example a bird if he flies from here to there the fruit is available that much effort everybody has to do say if something is written in your destiny little effort you have to do but if you don't do that little effort will it come on its own then what happens to that uh, fruit which is supposed to come now it is kept for the next life you understand no if you don't do the little effort then it is kept for the next life it will go at least that much you should um, like somebody is announcing prabhu ji in the kitchen gulab jamun is there please come at least you should get up and go and take it if you lying down and say somebody can bring and put in my mouth huh? you are saying others will definitely put in the mouth not in your mouth <laughs> their <own> mouth <laughs> correct <no? laughs> isn't it so you should at least take that that much effort to go because you are not told to cook gulab jamun you are told to just you yeah, honor it in the same manner whatever is in your destiny will come with little effort that much you should put so therefore i told you as students you put effort as working man you put effort you know 8 10 hours proper says in sound canto 8 to 10 hours if you work in a company whatever comes is your quota beyond that 12 14 15 hours you work then you don't give attention to family you don't give attention to god what type of life is that then you have to ask question why am i working what is the goal of work is goal of work only money or happiness also yeah then happiness means it's a tripod family profession devotion one has to give time for all the three correct na no? so modern day man man's life is becoming very hellish because he has become one sided in his materialistic approach na huh? so and uh, because of that uh, hedonistic approach of sense gratification and fruity activities modern man is terribly suffering and we don't want to join that rat race even if we join the rat race ultimately remain a rat only huh? that's why it's called what race rat race only therefore you have to mold your life in such a way that there is a spiritual material balance hmm? and that is offered in this place huh? this is a place where devotees are very intelligent huh? morning they rise early keep clean habits do aarti and everything for the lord it's a devotional you know purification of the heart happens everything then when they walk in the day in the world outside whatever they have learned with that uh, shastra chakshu they lead the life in the world they know how to deal with whom huh? and then evening they come back and do their material duty also they do it krishna kind of moment is a beautiful moment where there's a beautiful balance between material and spiritual hmm? it's like 98.6 degree fahrenheit it's like that but metaphysical people life is like 105 degree fahrenheit huh? ah, they are they going to they are suffering so much they are increasing the material fever huh? we don't want to be like that we don't say make it zero we say make it how much uh, temperature you should uh, body should be 98.6 correct yeah so that is balance material spiritual balance jal prabhupad ki gaur bhakta binda ki hare krishna